Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm really excited to test out the new ST200 and ST200G Mizuno drivers out. Yeah, we got to test them out a little bit at the PJ Show demo day. We did not get to use the TrackMan technology, however, to test the data and stuff. So that's what we get to do today, indoors where it's not freezing cold. Uh, so we have, you know, you got the ST200. I have the ST200G in my hand. Uh, both great models from Mizuno. Now they're mostly known for irons and those players irons specifically, but their driver performance has really increased the last couple of years. So this is gonna be a good test, I think. It is gonna be a really good test. To give you an idea of what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna start out with the ST200, hit a few shots with that. It's 9.5 degrees of loft on this one. That's the standard loft. And then we're gonna hit the ST200G. Standard loft is nine degrees. So I'm not gonna play around with the settings on here. I'm just gonna keep it standard so that way it's a fair test versus mm -hmm. them. We're going to test with the Atmos Black Torspec 6X. That is very, very comparable to the driver shaft that I'm playing. I'm playing a 6X right okay. now. Easier for us to fit it into this um, driver head. It's the only shaft we had available okay. to be out that was close. So that's why we're testing with this shaft. And then we're going to explore some options. Then we're going to play around with weights back with the ST200G, weights forward, weights in the middle, and we're also going to maybe play around with the hosel settings and see what happens. <laughs> so Thomas, we'll start with the ST200. I know we both hit that at the PJ show and liked them, so I'm kind of curious about what we see here. Yeah, so we got the chance to hit it at the PJ show, although it was freezing cold that day. Very true. So it's now going to be exciting to test it in a, our own environment to yes. see what track by numbers show. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Ooh, there's the draw. Yeah, good miss hit right there. All right, Thomas, five with the ST200. Uh, pretty solid results, really. I know you had maybe one or two they didn't quite catch perfectly, but the performance and the distance is all pretty solid. Yeah, shot three and shot five I didn't quite catch. You know, it's a smash factor, 148 on, on those two. Um, what's interesting is the last one I know I didn't quite catch, so it spun a little bit more. So it still went 300 yards. So end of the day, if I can have a miss hit that goes 300 yards, I'm a very happy person. So looking down at the club, I really like the shape of it. I like how it's kind of that pear-shaped look. Mizuno used to have that really dark blue colored mm -hmm. co club head, and I didn't really like the look of that, and I like how this is now that more black look. So it looks yeah. very clean to look down at. You mentioned the ST200G, we'll get you into that now. A little bit more compact. You got the weights in the middle on those tracks on the back, and you know, looking forward, we might also play around a little bit with those weights as we test a little bit more here. Yeah, we can definitely play around with it after hitting these five shots. Just wanted to see how it works, just kind of right in the middle. That way it's kind of more of a neutral position. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. Okay, Thomas, ST200G, five shots. Again, we'll note that the ST200G in standard is nine degrees of loft versus nine and a half on the ST200. So that might produce a little bit of differences, but what did you think in terms of, you know, obviously look and feel, but also the performance? It sounded a little bit louder. I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I was hitting this, I just yeah. sound maybe ever so slightly louder. Um, it did spin a little bit less. It was about 100 RPMs less, yeah. you know, and it was consistently a little bit less there as well. You know, so the consistency number says plus or minus 96. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice it didn't quite carry quite as far. The loft with the ST200G at nine degrees is half a degree less than mm -hmm. the ST200. So essentially it is gonna maybe fly a little bit lower. And we noticed that it launched a little lower, yep. flew a little bit lower and then just spun a little bit less. You notice yeah. the height was, you know, it was significantly lower, but it was going the same distance. Mm -hmm. For the most part, it's so. performing the way a more compact club head probably should with everything set to neutral and standard and whatnot. So you yep. had the weights in the middle uh, and you also had the smaller compact club head. That should produce kind of a lower flight 
maybe more workable ball flight as well. So that's kind of what we expected. And now we can kind of play a little bit with that back weighting where you kind of move those weights up, move those weights back and really toy with your ball flight a little bit. Yeah, speaking of playing with it, that's kind of just educate our viewers and just kind of show them what we can do with this. Can we talk about maybe moving the weight up? Yeah. Moving the weight back. And then we can play around with the lie angle. Sure. Maybe changing it plus two and minus two and just see what happens. So Thomas, you've moved those weights forward now. What do you maybe expect to see out of these five shots? I would expect a little bit less spin on this. Now, we already know that I'm spinning at very close to 2,000 RPM, so I don't really want to spin it too much lower. I'm just doing this for an education mm -hmm. purpose. I'm not really, I probably wouldn't be putting this far forward considering I'm already spinning it at yeah. 2,000 RPMs. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Nice. Banked. One foot of curve. Hey, Thomas, weights both moved forward on the sole. Uh, I mean, we kind of got what we expected for the most part here. Kind of a lower flight. I think the one thing here is your third shot was a little bit higher, a little bit more spin. Maybe that face was open. If we take that out, we really see the differences here. Yeah, that was a, that was a bad swing for me. I did leave the face open. Notice what happened when I did leave the face open. You'll notice. One, it launched higher, but it spun more. With a look at these other four shots here that were spinning about 1,900 RPMs on average, and also very, very consistently. Mm -hmm. So it was spinning just a little bit less. It was launching a little bit lower. If you take a look, scroll over to the right and take a look at the height, we'll notice it was only 69 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. So for me, with this setup here, I'm having a hard time getting a little bit more distance out of it because I'm not carrying it any further. So if you look at my total distance, I think it was 306. We scroll down, you know, they're almost the same, but my carry distance dropped. Yep. So 268 versus 274 and 278. So I was actually losing a little distance because I was spinning it less. I was launching a little bit lower. Yeah. So I would almost want to slide back this direction and see what actually happens. Yeah, that's going to be the next test here is to kind of see you know, how that club performs with the weights back because in some ways you could think it'd be similar to just the SG200 where it's got that more forgiving club head, higher MOI, more weight kind of lower and back in the club head. Uh, it, I would imagine that that's how that test or that club would test comparatively to the ST200. So we'll find out here, but yeah. good stuff there. Now, if I was playing in the British Open, you typically play in a lot of wind yeah. and it's pretty dry out. Yeah. So I would maybe try and hit that low shot with low spin. This option here wouldn't be a bad idea. Notice it chased out far, it right. spun less, and I'd be able to keep it under the wind. So this wouldn't be a bad option at all. Yeah, and yep. that's the, the advantage of having a driver like that where you can kind of play with it. Depending on your conditions, you can adjust that to what best fits the course that day. So, uh, but now we can move the weights back and see how it performs for you. Thomas, weights are back now. What are you gonna expect to see here? I would expect a little bit more spin, maybe a little bit higher golf shot. Mm -hmm. I'd say from back to front, you may see three or 400 RPM difference. We'll see if it actually happens or not, but I would I'd expect a little bit more spin. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Move the weights back, ST200G. Your dispersion circle is the smallest so far, and I think your distance might have been the farthest too. It was, um, and the spin was consistently a little bit over 2,000. Yeah, which oh, is kind yeah. of, I mean, that's almost ideal, right? Yep, that was almost, I mean, perfect right there. Carry distance was up, height was up, dispersion was better. Moving these weights back also will make the club a little bit more forgiving, so it's going to increase the MOI mm -hmm. a little bit on the club, which is also important when it comes to a driver, because driver is a very hard club to hit, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're hitting it pretty far. Yeah. So having these weights back is not going to hurt. Moving these weights forward obviously is going to help those players that may have a lot of, a lot of spin, 
but you've got to keep in mind that that forgiveness on that driver goes down when you do that. Sure. Yeah, that's one thing to note that you know if you do miss or uh, your swing path is a little bit off with those weights forward, you're going to be punished a little bit more severely than if you do have those weights back. Yeah. And I think that's kind of shown here if the the dispersion circle is pretty small here with those five shots that you had versus maybe that bigger circle here with the weights forward. I think we found a pretty good combination yeah, right there. Right there, that's yeah. T200G, weights back. That's, you know, I mean, I see you hit a lot of good tee shots, Thomas, uh, during our time filming video, but uh, that's a group of five tee shots right there. That's as good as any group of five I've seen you hit in a long time. Yeah, and the curve, the curve was like, a little bit to the left. Yeah, which Basically is what you're looking for. You got no. that little average of 15 feet to the left. You had, I think, one maybe a little baby fade in there, but yeah. mostly you're hitting that baby draw, and it's going exactly where you would want it. Yeah, this club really performed really well. So what else do you want to play with here now? We know that this is almost ideal for regards to performance. I just want to educate, see what actually happens when we make some adjustments here. Okay, Thomas, what adjustment did you make here to maybe optimize your performance just a little bit more? So first adjustment is I put this to the minus two setting. So nine degrees, technically seven degrees. Um, it's opening the face slightly a, a little bit. Okay. It should cause the ball to maybe spin a little bit less and maybe not so much go to the left. Is okay. So I'm just curious to see what actually happens here. Okay. So. Yeah, let's I would expect also this to maybe give us the highest ball speed numbers as well. Really? Okay. Wow. Pretty good. <laughs> That's just stupid. No matter what setting I put in, it's that really good. That is stupid. Well, Thomas, I mean, you could barely get any better um, with the weights back in the standard lie and everything. And I mean, that's still a pretty darn good circle there. You know, the distance may be a little bit shorter, but I think you're a little bit straighter too. What happened is with it being set at minus two, is it opened that face ever so slightly. So you'll pay attention to that dispersion. Notice now it's more hovering just a little bit on the mm -hmm. right side. So for me, I found it a little bit harder for me to turn it over as opposed to when I had it in the standard setting mm -hmm. where I actually could get that club face to release yeah. over a little bit easier. So kind of big difference with regards to direction. Distance was almost the same. Spin was pretty close the same. I you mean, did predict that this would be the highest ball speed so far. And you know, you were right about that. You've actually been kind of increasing ball speed as we go. And as you make more adjustments to the driver, which is, you know, he's a club fitter. So that would make sense. You're improving performance as we go here. Yeah. Um, I probably couldn't improve any, anything past this. So <laughs> what I want to do is I want to actually do the complete opposite now. So I want to mm. go to the plus two setting and just see what actually happens. Okay. Probably not optimal for me, but this yeah. is just a good way to kind of play around with some settings. And All right, well, let's see what happens when we change it to plus two then. Okay. So Thomas, we're now in the plus two setting. What would you expect to see for changes? I'm going to expect maybe a little less ball speed, a little bit more draw bias maybe a little bit more spin as well, a little bit higher. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you looked at it and saw some extra loft on it. So yeah, you're looking down, anticipating looks... that higher launch and then also kind of a draw bias. Yep, exactly. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yep. So Thomas, with the plus two setting, basically everything that you said would happen, happened. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how when you have a little more loft on the club, you're gonna have a little bit less ball speed. So mm -hmm. potential distance. We obviously noticed it launched a little higher. Um, it spun a little bit more mm -hmm. um, than, than the other settings as well. But it also had that little bit more draw bias to it. So it carried mm -hmm. a little bit further than in the minus two setting. Um, but it didn't go quite as far total distance because yeah. the minus two setting was chasing out a little bit more for a little less spin. Mm -hmm. But obviously if it's wet outside, carry distance is important. Right. But the big difference for me is, yeah, this 
versus this. Yeah. So plus plus two versus minus two is a way to affect the club face and the direction that club yeah. face goes. Yeah, that's, I mean, you talk about golfers out there maybe looking at this video, maybe interested in purchasing a new driver, maybe they're interested in the ST200G specifically, but that's the advantage you get with these drivers nowadays, um, whether you're missing right, missing left, you can fix that miss with the hazard adjustments. And like we've already seen, you can fix your spin, you can fix your launch, all that type of stuff as well with the weights in the back. So um, you get all the adjustment, adjustability that you might need out of a driver. But now in the past, Mizuno drivers have been a little bit more mechanical. They haven't looked so great with that adjustment on the sole. It's been kind of clunky but they've really cleaned it up with the SC200. I think it looks really nice. It's a very, very good looking club. Now, there are other options for a player that may be wanting this to be a little bit even more draw bias. You could put both weights onto the mm -hmm. heel side, kind of put it, slide it down here and make it you know, very, very draw bias. And there also is a ST200X that's coming out this year as well. We don't happen to have that model here yet, but I think that's going to be an interesting model going forward. You brought up the idea that even a tour player was yeah. actually using that model. Yeah, so the Mizuno uh, staff member Chris Kirk is playing it on the PGA Tour, which is different because those are those driver models. It's, it's kind of like the you know TaylorMade D types, um, the Callaway, uh, Maverick Max. Those type of drivers are you know it's a draw bias and maybe built for someone who needs more distance and needs that extra help with the launch. And it's funny that that model for Mizuno is being played on the PGA Tour, which you probably won't see anywhere else on tour with these other manufacturers. So it maybe does have a little bit more performance characteristics for a fast, a fast swing speed player such as yourself. But in this test, clearly the ST200G, uh, maybe with those weights back, uh, it was you know really the best test for you. Yeah, for me, it gave me confidence knowing the weights are back, so a little bit more forgiving club and also the ability to draw the ball, but not overdraw the ball. When I had this at plus two, it was mm -hmm. overdrawing. When I had it yeah. minus two, it was fading a little bit. So I like that blue circle the best. For me, yeah. ST200G, weights back, standard was the best today.